Is it normal for first time sex to hurt? When I have the opportunity to work with youth, a question I hear often is, is it normal for first time sex to hurt or is it normal to have pain the first time you have sex? First, let's dive into the question itself because it's not as straightforward as it may seem or sound. Sex can mean a lot of different things. It encompasses a lot of different activities. I have an old video on what is sex. You can check that out. I'll link it up above and down below. But in this case, when folks are asking about pain, they're usually referring to intercourse, uh, often vaginal, sometimes anal. Furthermore, when people reference pain, the person experiencing the pain is often the person who's on the receiving end of the penetration, so the person with the vulva or the anus. Then there's the question about whether or not that pain during first time sex is normal. And that depends on what we mean by normal. If we mean normal in the sense of, is it common? Is it something that a lot of people experience? Then the answer to that question is yes. If we're talking about, is it normal in the sense of, is this an acceptable thing that's okay that I just kind of have to put up with? I'm gonna say no. Now, intentional consensual pain that's inflicted during sex because that's what one or both partners are into, yeah. Pain or discomfort that you didn't ask for and do not want but you're experiencing because a person is trying to put a part of their body or an object inside you, no bueno. Side note. There's a bug. Side note, as I was preparing for this article, I googled, is pain during first time sex normal? And what I found was article after article after article confirming that yes, it's normal. And yes, you may have some discomfort. And yes, there may be some, you know, stinging or burning. And what you need to do is just put up with it. No, you don't. I'm gonna throw this out here to y'all folks who are writing these articles. Some which are being written for like highly reputable medical or sex education websites. Stop telling people that experiencing pain during sex is something normal that they just have to endure. It's not and they don't. I believe that sexual pleasure is important for a number of reasons, not the least of which is because pleasure is often the reason that a lot of us have sex. Now, even if pleasure is not your primary motivation for having sex, you still don't have to endure pain. Pain, non-consensual, unintentional pain, is your body telling you that something is not working, something's not clicking. So what are the options if first time sex or any time sex is painful? Option number one is to stop. Stop doing the thing that is causing you pain. Do not keep doing the thing that is causing you pain. If penetration or an attempt at penetration is hurting or uncomfortable, do not force it. That is unlikely to help. Now, when I say stop, maybe that's just stopping and we're not going to be having sex today, or that might just be a pause. We're just taking a moment. Sometimes, the pain or discomfort can come just because the body isn't ready for that kind of stimulation. You know, a person's body is not ready to receive, you know, a toy or a penis or a finger or anything inside of it. And so what you can do in that situation, if, if penetrative sex is something you're going for, is you can go back, go back a few steps. You know, if there was something you were doing before the penetration that felt really good, maybe keep doing that. Stick with that a little longer and see if, you know, you can heighten your body's arousal and then, you know, try penetration again. It might feel very different after, you know, a few or several minutes of doing something non-penetrative. You can get yourself some lube. If we're talking about the kind of intercourse that involves a vagina, then I need y'all to know something because there's this pervasive myth that the degree to which a vagina lubricates or gets wet is 
an indication of how turned on a person is. It is possible that you can be very, very aroused and very, very down for having something inside your vagina, but your vagina just isn't that wet. In which case, there are lots of store-bought lubes. They come in different varieties. There is oil-based, which I do not recommend for vaginas. Do not use them with latex products because they'll degrade them. Maybe I'll do a video just on lubes later. There's silicone-based lube and there is water-based lube. So look for a lube that is going to be body friendly for you and is going to be compatible with any toys and or safer sex products that you are using. If you're like, look, I am ready. I'm ready to have something inside of me. But your body's like, look, I'm just kind of dry. I'm not really, you know, producing on my own. It's fine. It's no reflection of how sexual you are or how ready you are. Just get some store-bought lube add it to the equation and then you may be shocked at how great and how pain-free penetration can suddenly feel. And while we're talking about lube and penises or toys or fingers or whatnot going inside people's bodies, let's talk about lube and anal sex. The anus does not self-lubricate at all. It's like, that's just not really happening. It's not something that our bodies really do. The anus is full of very delicate, sensitive tissue. So if something goes in there dry and there's a lot of friction, then there's a high likelihood of that delicate skin tearing that can lead to uh, infections. It can increase increase your likelihood of contracting a sexually transmitted infection and it can also increase the likelihood of condoms tearing because condoms don't like a lot of friction. I'm not going to tell you you have to use lube when you have anal sex because that's your business, but I do highly, 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 highly recommend it. And lube bonus, it's great for hand jobs. Some people actually like it for oral sex. You can put it on other parts of the body if you just want to like be wet and slick. And then there are some varieties of lubes that are really good if you scuba dive and you need to get into your wetsuit. So lube is just a great all purpose product to have in your life. It may be like my favorite sexual product of all time. Something else you might want to do if you're trying to have that intercourse for the first time and it's not feeling good and there's pain is to check in with your feels or if it's happening to your partner ask your partner about how they're feeling sometimes pain is because of some sort of physical issue sometimes it's because of an emotional issue you know maybe we are not into having sex as much as we hoped we were or maybe we're not into having sex at that moment or in that way or you know there just may be something emotional and our bodies are reacting being like I don't feel okay about this you know it's okay to take a few deep breaths to take a few minutes again hit that pause button and check in with yourself and or check in with your partner. Sex is generally best when everyone really wants to be there and part of pleasure is the emotional pleasure that we can get from sex and so if you're not having that, that's okay and it's okay to be like, okay, hold up, I, I for some reason don't feel entirely good about what's happening here. Totally valid. There is a condition called vaginismus, and this is when folks with vaginas experience involuntary tightening of the vaginal walls when someone or something is inserted or, you know, attempts insertion into the vagina. And there are a lot of different variations of vaginismus. You know, some folks experience it no matter what they try to put in their vagina. So it's not only, you know, during sex, but it can be, you know, when they attempt to insert a tampon or anything else. Some people, it's more situational, like they'll have it in certain situations and not others. If you are living with vaginismus, then yes, it can make intercourse, penetration, receptive kind of sex 
difficult or painful. There are different treatments and therapies that are available um, if you have vaginismus and you find that this is impacting your quality of life or it's preventing you from experiencing the kind of sex that you want to be experiencing. So if that's something that is happening, um, you know, check in with a medical professional that you trust and you feel that you can really talk to openly about what's going on. And last, but definitely not least, one of your options, if intercourse is painful, is to not have intercourse. A sexual myth that's even more prevalent than the one about, you know, wet vaginas and level of arousal is the idea that intercourse is the real sex. That is BS. Like there is no council of real sex that's going to evaluate what you're doing with your partner and go, hmm, was there a penis inside you? No, disqualified. People experience intimacy and enjoy sexual pleasure and have orgasms if that's a thing that's important to them all kinds of ways with like nothing going into anybody else's body. There are so many different ways to get off, to have pleasure, to connect with a partner that don't involve penetration. And understand that I'm not saying that penetrative slash receptive sex is bad or that you shouldn't like it. I'm just saying it's not mandatory. So, you know, if you try it and you're just like, hey, I'm just not really into this, then don't do it. So to summarize, is painful first time sex normal? Yeah, it's common. Do you have to accept it? No, you don't. What should you do? You have lots of options. Don't feel like you have to do things to or with your body that are painful, especially when the experience is overall, you know, meant to be pleasurable. Let me know in the comments below if anyone ever taught you that vaginal or anal pain during first time penetration was normal or acceptable. That's all for now. I hope you have a great day and I will see you soon. Bye.